strong language warning. Due to the programming language used in this episode, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cuss and swear because it's in the name. You have been warned. If that is an issue, please turn back now. Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, over the past couple of episodes, we have been taking a look at the BrainFuck programming language, and there is actually something pretty significant about how things work there. Because, well, it actually goes back to a pretty classic computational model called the Turing machine. Now, the Turing machine is actually, well, not a physical machine. Instead, it is more of a theoretical concept and is often used as sort of the template for what a computer can actually do when simplified to very abstract mathematical concepts. And guess what? It's actually surprisingly similar to how BrainFuck does things. So here's how a Turing machine works. On the side of data storage and manipulation, all your data is on an extremely long piece of tape. There's actually a head that moves along this tape. It can actually read and write to that tape. So at this point so far, everything still sounds very close to, well, how BrainFuck actually has things laid out. On the side, you have your program itself, which causes well, things to happen, right? The tape to move around in the data and to perform certain operations. The mathematical definition of a Turing machine is where things get a little bit more complex because essentially there are a few important things to take note of, particularly things like whether the program actually finishes and produces an acceptable answer. In fact, this is what is actually applied, you know, to things like mathematical proofs to things like, say, the halting problem which is, yeah, one of the more classic problems when it comes to, you know, computing theory. Turing machines can be implemented even though they tend to be, you know, more of a concept than something you create. But really, all the computers we have are considered one implementation or another of a Turing machine. They're just sort of more complex in a way, but ultimately you can see a lot of parallels between, you know, a Turing machine and how our computers actually work because, well, we have the same thing, right? We have a storage for data. We have sort of a sequential state of operations. We also have operations that are mostly sequential, but also with the ability for us to jump back and forth. And of course, our programs have to produce some results at the end of the day. What the Turing machine tries to do is to actually distill all of this down into a very simple, abstract mathematical definition. So yeah, that's basically a Turing machine in a nutshell. We've not really covered anything very significant about how it works or how it can be used, but hopefully this gives you a very broad idea of what a Turing machine actually is and what it's for. Anyway, that's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. I hope you've gained some insight today, but until next time, you're watching 0612TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.